They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. We've heard it all before. The alleged dangers and threats to the U.S. from Mexico, from gun violence to drugs. But what if it were the other way around? That's what the Latin American country says is happening. Let me explain. Smith & Wesson, Beretta, Colt, Glock, Ruger, Century Arms, and Barrett, all American gun manufacturers, and now all targets of a lawsuit by Mexico. In that lawsuit, Mexico says American gun makers are to blame for drug cartel attacks and other violence. I'm talking about crimes like the attempted murder of a Mexico City police chief and the murder of a popular Mexican investigative journalist. The Mexican government says in the suit that almost all guns recovered at crime scenes in Mexico, 70 to 90 percent of them, were trafficked from the U.S. And 200,000 guns are illegally trafficked into Mexico each year, according to a University of San Diego study. The legal advisor of Mexico's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Alejandro Celorio Alcantara, ties the illegal guns and the injuries they cause back to U.S. gun manufacturers in a letter to the Washington Post. He points out they have access to real-time sales data that raises red flags, data that suggests the guns are being sold to so-called straw purchasers, people who have legal gun licenses, but then who turn around and sell them to rings of gun traffickers. While the manufacturers haven't responded to the suit, the National Shooting Sports Foundation has. It is wrong for the Mexican government to try to blame law-abiding manufacturers in the U.S. courtroom for what is going on in Mexico, which really is the inability, unwillingness, or failure, or a combination of the Mexican government to stop the cartels and to bring them to justice in the Mexican courtroom. And guns aren't the only thing making their way from the U.S. into Mexico. The DEA started noticing marijuana, grown legally in the U.S., was starting to stream into Mexico. And news reports have found the smuggling's only gotten worse. All this as a 2020 DEA report acknowledged that marijuana seizures from Mexico along the southwest border have dropped about 80 percent since 2013. So what's happening to drive that change? Well, state regulations have loosened, while the quality of the product has improved in the U.S. The DEA report says, eventually, Mexican-grown pot may increase in quality to compete with domestic-produced marijuana. But Raul Alizalde, CEO of Mexico-based hemp meds, says it's simply not there yet. In Mexico, you could not find, or it's harder to find that, that quantity that you could find in the United States. So yes, the quality is a big difference. It's making a big difference when the people want to buy products. Elizalde explains that until the marijuana market is legal in Mexico, there won't be any serious competition. That's why in the United States, it's better quality because people are competing in the legal market to have the best product available for their consumers. So what do you think? With the increase of guns and marijuana going south, is the U.S. a danger to Mexico? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to hit the straight arrow bias meter.